Welcome back to Heiko Tutorial. This video is about the SELECT option in our databases. For database SELECT, or rather OUTPUT, we have two methods. First SELECT, and then RANDOM SELECT. Let's go to try them out in the editor. Now we are back at an application that we have made in some former sessions. Also, after we select server, add a service. And this one is to demonstrate select. As we have more and more services on the server, we can sort them into groups. For example, I can have a wrap for select services. And this one's for submit insert services. I can throw the corresponding services into the wraps to group them, to order them in a more tidy manner. I will first use uh, the most basic select option. To output from the database, of course the target should be the database. And choose this select. So since I'm doing a most basic select and output operation, I don't need any input parameters for me to add filters or something. But as I'm doing an output, of course I will need an output parameter to store the output result. For this SELECT action, it has conditions, orders, range, and fields. For now I am doing a most basic SELECT and OUTPUT operation, so I am indiscriminately outputting all the data in the database. And therefore I will leave all of this blank. Just click the blank area, and they will fold themselves. And when it's completed, select current service and set output data to the results matrix objects value. And this is how we select all the data in the database. We can go to debug. So the output result include all the data from data ID 1, 2, 3, and 2, 13. It is all we have in this database. We can set conditions to modify the output result. For example, I can select, I can uncheck some fields Maybe I won't need to display the submitter, creation time, and modification time, so I will uncheck them. Now it is only outputting these four columns from the database. A thing worth notice here is that why am I keeping this data ID even if I don't need to display it? This is because data ID is the primary key for lookup. When later you need to update this data, data ID will help you locate a record, so it is necessary to output data ID to the front end. And inside this range, you can define how many records do you want it to output. For example, I want it to output uh, from 1 to 3, I will write 1 to 3. And if I leave it blank, and when I have more than 50 records of data, it will, it will output from 1 to 50. And this range can be used to achieve pagination. For example, I can have two input parameters. The first one is current page. The second one is records per page. And for example, I want to display two data, two records, 
on each page. So set this to 2. So for the first page, I will have records 1 to 2, and the second page 3 to 4, so on and so forth. And I actually have a formula for this, and that is the subtraction of current page minus 1 and times the records per page, and then plus 1. And for this, it should be simply current page times records per page. Let's verify this formula. Assume that I'm currently at page 1, so 1 minus 1 times 2 and plus 1. Then this is 1. And for the ending, it is 2. So the output range for page 1 is records 1 to 2. We can try it out when I write page 2 for the current page and debug. It outputs records 3 and 4 for me. You can take this formula away uh, for you will be using pagination a lot in the future designs. And next we have this orders. We can arrange the outputs uh, in the data ID order or some other things based on your choice. For example, I can arrange them with this age. And they can be in increment order or in reverse. Before I hit debug, I will change this records per page to 30 so that I will display all the data in one page. And you can see now the data, the records are arranged according to their ages from the youngest to the oldest. And finally we have these conditions. This is to add filters and actually select before output. So for example, I can add a parameter here, call it name and I will use uh, Leslie and set the condition to name and equals to name. Notice the color difference between these two names. This one without the background is the name is the field name uh, from the database. Right? It has its fellow's age and intro. And this name with a blue background is one of the input parameters I've defined here. You can find it together with the current page and records per page. And of course, apart from this equals to sign, I have many other choices to set my condition. Now I'm using this equals to and go to debug. And now it finds the less least for me. And there's a tip. For example, uh, I have add multiple filters and I want to ignore one of them. I can use this dollar plus any sign for this for its value. Now the selection process ignores the condition on names and outputs all my data. After we've designed this service for selecting an output, we're now going to the front end to complete the workflow. This is the registration page and we will need another page for data display. First I will set this page, uh, its horizontal alignment to its center, and go to page 1 to borrow this title, copy it and page 2 paste it. And then I will need a list, uh, the register's name, age, 
and self-introduction in three columns, and the records will be listed below. So overall it is a vertical layout, so that I will add a column to this page, and inside this column I will first have a row to hold the name, age, and self-introduction. I will multiple select all of these texts and give them some um, width. And this one, first text will be name, second one, age, and this one is the introduction. I will give a bit more width to this introduction and make the font smaller and going on to make some adjustment to make them look better go to this row and set it to horizontal justify a space between and the row will also need some paddings on the left and right side maybe 10 yeah and set this row to wrap and for the column I will let it prop the row should have some margin on its top and go to the page 2 and set some padding stop uh, make a copy of this row inside this column the first row will serve as the labels and this row will go inside a v4 widget to display the information I can give this information card a border on top and this border will serve as a dividing line color black to use a v4 widget we'll first need a data source for it so under this page 2, create an object array, a matrix object, and import structure from the database, and import structure from the database. We can delete the irrelevant columns, and this one will be the registration registration list next add a v4 widget and put inside the information card select the data source for this v4 widget to be this array its value and activate data binding for this elements inside it. So for the introduction, current data one intro. If you're not familiar with what I'm doing right now, you can find this inside a video on V4 widget. And we will activate this overflow property for this column so we can scroll it scroll Y and the labels will not need to scroll with it so we can drag it outside the column to the page okay. and since we've just mentioned pagination why don't we add a widget for pagination? Go to this widgets, navigation, and pagination here. 
uh, put it inside this page. And take a look at this paginations property panel. Whenever you use pagination, you always need to define total items and items per page and the current page. And therefore, to make it more convenient to make global changes, let's go to this page too and have another two uh, numeric variables. One for total items and the other for items per page. Well, where does the number of these total items come from? It comes from counting the database. So we'll have to modify this service. First thing, add an output parameter called total records. And we'll need inside this definition another counting action before this select. Select this database and and count. Set its conditions the same as this condition. So name equals to the name from the input parameter. So that it will count the numbers of the records that satisfies this select condition and they are also the records to be output. We are not able to get the number of total records with this by counting the rows of this matrix object array. This is because we have limited this, this output by giving it a range. So for this counting action, similarly we'll have a data hub on the server. This will be the counting result. And when this counting action is completed, select this numeric variable and set its value to the drop down list's result. And going down to the select action, there is a new output parameter because we have added one. And this one should be select from tree this counting results value. We can use debug to see whether it works. Go to the name and set it to dollar any. Debug and scroll to the bottom. We can see the total records equals to thirteen, and that is the number of all we have in the database that satisfies the counting and selecting condition, which is now set to any. After everything set on the server, we can go back to the stage, the front end, to add an actions group to call the service. Going back to the stage, and inside this page to add an actions group, name it to search. And for this actions group, it will, the target will be the, the select service. And since the select service will need three inputs, namely current page, records per page, and name, we will also need these inputs so that the actions group can receive this input and pass it on to the service. So add the three inputs. Records per page and name. Then we can select to pass on this input uh, to the service. So current page equals to page, records per page, uh, name, name. And when this action is completed, we will set the value of this objects array, of matrix object, set its value to the results of data. This is the output parameter of the select service. 
and similarly, we will set the value for this total items. Its value also comes from the result of this action and total records. And now you can see this actions group is not is neither referred to or used by any other widgets. So when to use it? We can use it when the page is displayed. Set the target to be this search actions group. When the page is displayed, it means we have just entered the page, so we are at page one. And records per page will use the value of this data hub, items per page, and its value. And for the name to be searched, for now we won't set any conditions to it. In other words, set it to any. And how to set any on the stage? We'll have to select system and any. Let's go to preview. It is displaying page one because we have to use this preview current page. Now I'm having the 13 records from my database. Next thing to do is to complete this pagination. Or maybe first go back and set this margin top to be zero. I think we'll make it look better. Yeah. Moving on to complete the pagination. Select pagination and activate data binding for this total items. It should be this total items value. And for the items per page, we also have this data hub. And we can set a value inside this data hub. Uh, two, for example. And now, on page one, it is only displaying two records. And we have in total 13 records. So we'll have seven pages. There, seven pages, and it's the end. Next, we will complete this so we can check the data on each page. Add an event to the pagination. And the tree can be either click or page change. It has the same effect. We'll use this page change. And the target is to use this actions group again. Select this page in the drop down list to current page. And this one is still items per page. And the name we will still use any. And now this pagination widget should be working. Yeah, you can see we have different displays for each page. And for the last page, there's only one. Next, we are going to add an actual search condition to our application. We will need first a search box. So for that, an input box and a button. And I will use a row to hold them. Inside this row, an input box and a button. Drag this row above and change its appearance a little bit. Set their height to 30 pixels. And this button, a smaller font. And, and less width. Uh, its name should be its name should be search. And set this row to wrap for its height and horizontal alignment to justify. Um, 
or maybe just a line to the left and I will give them both some margin on the left. Clear the background color and I can also clear the background color for this and margin top yeah done and this should be enter name next we'll add a workflow for the search button so that when I click it it will help us to search what we've entered in this input box so when it is clicked the target is to call the search actions group and page select the pagination widget it is here and the current page records per page is again the, the items per page value and the name should be the value of this input box and search for example orca the search result is displayed here and the pagination widget also changed because we now only have one result which occupies one page so only one page left and when I clear this input box and hit search again we get an empty page but logically we we'll wanted to clear search conditions and give us all the data so let's go back to the editor and realize this part to achieve that we'll need to edit the event for the search button so what we want to do is to set the search condition to any if the input is empty and if it's not search by the given input so for this name the search condition we can write eternary operator inside here we can write eternary operator for it so first if the enter names value is empty or rather does it have a value and if yes it does we will just use this value and a colon if not if this is empty we will use system so this formula asks if this input box has a value and if yes we'll use this value if not we'll use any as or condition we can copy this and also apply it to the event for displaying this page and for the event on pagination preview and search for Leslie and clear the box and the others are back to recap uh, the select operation for databases can be very simple you can leave out all these conditions, orders, range or fields but in practice we usually need to uncheck some irrelevant fields and use this range for output or uh, pagination this formula is a very useful takeaway from this video and you can take it down and whenever you use pagination you will have to make accounting 
and whenever you need pagination, you will need to perform counting and record the number of your output in total. And the other output parameter of this service would be the output data in a matrix object array. And for the workflow on the stage, we usually we usually call the service with an actions group so that we can use this actions group in different places without repeatedly writing these actions. And for the items per page, we create a numeric variable for it and refer to this variable in the events so that whenever I want to change this items per page, I will only need to change the value of this variable. And for the search boxes logic, the ternary operator will be used very often. First, see whether the input box has a value. If it does, we will use the value, and if it is empty, we will set another condition for it. For database select op operation, we also have this random select. I'm not going to demonstrate that here, but you can try it out if you are interested. And that is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching.